focus. Alright, we are on a road trip. Me and Andrew and Jared. We are headed west um, on the thruway here. Out to uh, Hainsworth Farm. We're going to look at a silage trailer. A mass uh, silage trailer. We got crappy weather here today. It's Sunday. And uh, we're going to travel out there. And look at a silage trailer. Um, it's a 36 foot mass, uh, mass brand um, silage trailer. So we're just cruising on the throughway right now. And we'll be there in an hour and 10 or 20 minutes or something like that. Check that stuff out. He also makes, um, he converts aluminum. Um, oil tankers into manure tankers, so we'll get a look at them too. Dairy farm there. I don't know if they're milking cows there anymore or not. It doesn't look doesn't, like doesn't, it. Doesn't look like it, does it, Andrew? They got equipment out there. Do they? Yeah, they got a couple uh, tractors. Looks like there. some big ground been plowed. They been planted yet. That's, that been plowed. That been moldboard plowed. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, so we're just gonna keep moving along here. All right, we are not that far away from our destination here. Junior, he's uh, watching YouTube videos in the back. We haven't got hardly any traffic on 390 here, so it's allowing me to pull the camera out and do a little video. And we've went by quite a few farms here. Yeah, there's a pretty decent one uh, off to our left. Got some Harvestor silos in the background. You guys probably can't see that all that well. But we've come by quite a few farms. The weather's straightened up, gotten a little better here. Yeah, there's that farm right there. Looks like maybe a 250 cow operation, maybe. Oh, it's a nice little place, too. Uh, but at any rate, it's not raining anymore. Pavement's been dry here for a while. We're only like 20 minutes away from uh, where we're going. Ground's a little drier out here. It leads me to believe that maybe they didn't get as much rain uh, as we got on Friday night. But yeah, there isn't any traffic on this lane. There's nobody behind me. I could be all over the road here doing a video and it doesn't matter. There's some traffic coming the other way and uh, in the uh, opposite lane there, but nothing in this lane. The fields are a little more open out here than what we have at home. This is a uh, western New York corning area. Um, I think that's right. to Hainsworth Farms to look at a, a silage trailer, a mass uh, silage trailer. So I'm just rotating the camera around. There really isn't any scenery worth looking at, but um, after I've drove past it, it's too late. So I'm just kind of panning the camera around here. So. So we will rejoin you uh, once we get there. Now there's a, before I turn the camera on, there's another dairy operation there. Ooh, looks like they're in business still. Mixer wagon up on the hill, and I think I seen a, I think I seen a spreader uh, running out back. Uh, there's some kind of a, what the heck is that? Is it grain or salt? That's salt. I think it is. I should know what that is there, but oh, I don't. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's got to be the salt mines or something. I I don't know. It ain't green. It ain't yeah, green. We're we're uh, near Mount Morris here now, and then that's all uh, salt. Why don't you take the camera, Jared? Let Jared take the camera there. Uh, train 
tracks right there in these train cars. They must now they're getting loaded. Are they? Yeah, it's a big hopper there. They're loading all them rail cars. Probably not today, but there's employees there. They might be working today. the MAS mass whatever uh, trailer here that we came to look at seems to be built pretty well it's got a um, little access door here to get into the trailer and uh, this door is open there it's got one bow across the center he said they're running a, a larger chain in this than compared to um, what anybody else is running. This trailer here is, what do you say it was? 36 foot here? This one's 36 foot long. It's got a uh, two foot extension um, on the top. All right, two foot extension on the top and that is all laser cut. It's not expanded metal or anything. Um, so it's got eight foot. High sides running on a, a 60,000 pound air ride with a, it's got an extra spread there. And it's built quite heavy. Um, this framework is all real thick stuff there. That's gotta be 5 16 uh, material there and then everything is on top of uh, the axle the brake canisters are up as you know they're right up on top of the um, axle there with um, 30,000 pound what do you say those were Jared Hendrickson no, uh, all custom built stuff, I think. Nah, the airbags I don't know what kind oh, of airbags yeah. Mass custom all yeah. So and everything is all built. The whole frame, under frame, is all built out of rectangular tubing. This is two by three cross members, four by six rectangle tube uh, for the undercarriage. And um, what else do we got here? And then it's got a. Um, Oh, it's got a hydraulic gate on it, and then the hydraulic gate um, is plumbed in with the hydraulic system that would run the um, apron chain for the floor. Um, it's got two large Parker motors um, that run the apron train, chain, one on each side, and then it's got a, um, a, dr a driven with a 100 uh, chain. And behind this cover here so they seem to be built really well um, again this one's 36 foot long eight foot high sides eight foot wide that's a chain tensioner there and behind this little door and then another feature that it has to it is a little door that you could lift up here to grab a sample from there and then he they put a uh, gauge on the side that the um, chopper operator would be able to see and that would give the uh, operator an idea of the chopper how much weight is running in the um, airbags. suspension airbags on the chopper there's another look at the 
hydraulic cylinder on the lift gate. And we'll look inside this trailer once again here. There's the uh, tailgate in the back. It's got large uh, gussets that come down to it. Yeah. We put our gussets on the um, on the outside on the silage truck boxes. But, all right, so that should do that. We're gonna head on out of here. We're gonna look at a um, the grease points here. We're gonna look at um, a frack tank that he has um, that he's selling as well. So. The fifth wheel plate doesn't hinge at all, it's just welded no, right it's in. It's a straight plate. fifth wheel plate. It's just... Another thing that he's selling that we're looking at here is a frack tank. This frack tank is uh, made by Dry Hill and it can be moved uh, with a tractor and or a um, truck with a large. Uh, Pinnel hook on it. The the part that Andrew's standing next to is the part that would go on a three point hitch to a tractor. This has got a dry hill uh, pump on it, something similar to what's on our the back of our manure trucks here, and then it's got a swing boom kind of set up just like our uh, manure trucks. And the valves here to swing the boom over and get ready to load out with and, and whatever. But um, it's got large uh, 445 truck tires on the back and then the rear axle here. Um, you can lift up for road transport. Lock the cylinders, two cylinders, one on each side and uh, to move it from farm to farm or, or whatever. And then when you get to your job site, work site, farm, whatever. You would set this on the ground just like it is now. We're gonna climb up on here in a minute and uh, you can dump trucks into it all the way around. It's all open at the top. Um, he was telling us that you can hook up a drag line system to that port there, I would guess. There's a knife gate on the um, tank itself so that you can work on this system here with the tank full. I don't recall what he said this held. I think it holds about 20,000 gallons. I could be wrong. But it doesn't say anywhere, does it? We're going to jump up on top and take a peek inside and then move on to the next thing here. Now we're up on top of the tank here now. It's um, got gussets, stabilizers going crossways, and the uh, boom that would load your tanker in the field is just swung over the top. It has um, an agitation line running the length of the uh, tank here that you can agitate the tank with and then the sump is right there and it acts like it must be a lot deeper right there uh, with a tapered floor and that's how the manure gets into the the pump so that you can get the tank down about empty it has that elbow on there to be able to suck all the material out of the tank so that's that just knife gates all over this thing yeah. It's covered in knife gates. I like it. Yep, yeah, knife gates everywhere. This uh, looks to be a looks to be like a well put together unit here. So this thing is nice. That's for sure. Alright, this guy ends up um, refurbishing tankers and uh, converting them over into uh, manure tankers. He's got a bunch of tankers on deck here that he's going to uh, be redoing here. So
This is going to conclude our little field trip. Uh, we're only seven or eight miles away from home right now. What do you guys think of our little field trip? What do you huh? think, Junior? I didn't like it because it was too far away. Too far away? What do you think, Jared? Frack tanks are cool. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah, um, we went originally to look at that. Um, silage trailer and he ended up having a frack tank there as well so obviously two something two obviously two things that we need um yeah so you're never gonna need a frack tank never gonna need a frack tank huh how would you know we don't have no oh <laughs> well that's gonna do it for this one folks we'll catch it the next one